All right, guys, so today we are going to be going through one of my old sketchbooks. This is a sketchbook that I used from 2017 to 2019. Um, and for anyone that is wondering what kind of sketchbook this is, this is a moleskin sketchbook. I don't really use these anymore because they're not really bleed proof. I don't like the curved edges on the pages. But this was one of my first sketchbooks that I ever really tried on. I tried to fill up every page as I was inspired by this other artist on YouTube that you guys might know. Uh, his name is Peter Draws. He, he would do a lot of illustrations just covering the whole page and that inspired me to start my own. So yeah, let's get into the first page here, or the first page spread. And as you can see on this side we have, uh, this is actually a art piece that is inspired by the artist Vex Art. You guys might know him on YouTube or Instagram, but he does this very colorful, vibrant doodle style. And so I wanted to try my own version of that at the time. Um, this was, I think, early 2017. I used Copic markers, um, I think Micron pens. And as you can see, I don't know, I find it kind of boring. I, I didn't really like it when I finished it. It was an interesting test to try out a new style, but I knew that this style wasn't for me, so I, I didn't really continue with this at all. And this was around the time when I really didn't break into my imagination completely, so it was hard for me to kind of let the flow of things just kind of take over, and I, I was running out of things to draw. That's an issue that I don't really deal with now. But we move on to this page over here. This is a portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. This is actually, um, I redrew one of his drawings that he made of himself. And then after I did that, I was kind of like, this is kind of boring. I can't just have just this old man on a page. So I decided to put a bunch of Leonardo da Vinci quotes that are in the background here. One part that I uh, <laughs> like is that there's one part here where I'm, yeah, it says fart. I uh, really meant to say it's and work of art, but it just came out as fart. And I've always been like, I hope no one notices that. But no one really sees this book anyway because it's the older sketchbook. Uh, and one thing that I uh, didn't really like about uh, this one too was just it didn't really have much depth to it. Um, I didn't like the shading style. I felt like I was pretty lazy with this. And same thing with the hair here. I felt like it just wasn't consistent and I didn't spend the time necessary to make sure that every square inch had the same amount of effort put in. And that's something that I kind of realized throughout the sketchbook is I should really pay attention to every square inch of the sketchbook. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next page here. This one is titled Brain Guide, inspired by Peter Draws. This was around the time when I really started to just draw with just pen and ink and not really any um, planning beforehand. And this is kind of a simple version of what I do now. It's simple because there's a lot of just inconsistencies, I think, with the overall flow and doodle of things. But I, I don't know. I found this page to be a little bit more amateurish compared to the work that I do now. The background is really simple. The borders are really simple. I feel like I didn't put too much effort into the complexity of things. Even though it might look pretty complex here, it doesn't really show that much depth which is something that I took into consideration after finishing this piece and tried to apply more depth to my future pieces. We go on to this page here. This is one of my favorites in the sketchbook. This one is called Dreamland Number One. This is actually part of a five part series that I made called Dreamland Number One, Two, Three, Four, and so on. Um, but this one was inspired by my favorite band at the time, which was Pink Floyd. I just got into them. This was like early 2017. I must have been like 16 or 15 at the time. And uh, I did my own version of kind of like the Dark Side of the Moon cover. But this time I wanted to make it very yin-yang, um, kind of like polar opposites in the sense this is order in this section, and then this is chaos in this section. So all the nice orderly flowy lines here, all the cubes that are kind of going up, the ribbons, the little double helixes, all the buildings are nice and intact. And then on this side, everything is very chaotic. The buildings and the pyramids here are, you know, kind of being destructed into different shapes and stuff. And we move on to this page. This one, we have Dreamland number two on this side, but then we have this piece here. I actually started this, um, I don't remember when, but I, I only did this section right here, just where these sunflowers were, and I just kind of gave up on it because I didn't know what else I was going to add. And then I ended up going back to it later because I'm like, geez, I gotta finish each page that I do. I can't just leave them undone. So I ended up finishing the pages, but I was really lazy on this one. You could see where there's a lot of effort put into this section right here, then you go over here, 
not too much effort put in, just some lazy lines. And I, I knew that this was kind of a, you know, a mess up page. And I took a lot of um, lessons from this one and applied it to my new sketchbook. And we go on to dreamland number two here. You can see everything is in purple. Um, I didn't intend for it to be purple. I actually bought this Micron pen thinking that it was black ink. And then I started to draw and I was like, wait, this isn't black ink. But I just rolled with it. Uh, and we just have this little cat in the hat guy here and this crazy illustration dreamland world. One thing that I wish I would have done though um, at the time was just shade in all of these clouds here. I feel like that would have completed it more because you know now there's like a very obvious distinction between this darker and more detailed section and this section here which is just very simple. And we go on to probably the best page spread of this sketchbook where we have this abstract comic book that I made. It says somewhere, somewhere. Someone figure out what I write here. I'm lost, but I completely messed up the words, probably just because I wasn't thinking when I was writing it. And then we go over here. We have this little weird box guy saying, what am I? And then we go down here to the second panel, and it says nowhere, kind of connecting somewhere, nowhere. And we have this weird bird guy that's boom kind of drinking some soda, some wine, and other things. And, you know, I really focused on the detail. I, I told myself, okay, you're going to put, uh, you know, as much effort as you can into every square inch, and that's what I did. And I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I even included, at the time, some of my friends that I was hanging out with at the time. I'd include their names in there, just hidden throughout the piece. And then on this page, um, this was actually two musical icons that I was into both when I was a child and uh, the current day, or, you know, the present day at the time. Uh, so, you know, people said this looked like Elon Musk, um, but it's actually Johnny Cash. And then we have Kendrick Lamar on that side, and a, kind of a quote that both of them, um, I believe this is a Kendrick Lamar quote, but, you know, you hear Johnny Cash singing a lot about this, too. We hurt people that love us, love people that hurt us. And we have a blast of the past, referring to him, a glimpse of the present, referring to him. And we go down here, and this is where, you know, I, I just kept on with the details, but this circle here I kind of messed up on, and I wasn't really too happy with how this section turned out specifically, but still a cool piece nonetheless. And we move on to the next page. Now this page is um, actually a drawing that I did in person um, at the MoMA um, in New York, um, my family took a vacation to New York back in so was July 11th, 2018, and we went to uh, the MoMA because I knew I was into art, so I got to see all the artworks there. And honestly, it's not my favorite art museum. I like the one in Chicago way better, but it was still really interesting. I got to see um, Starry Night by Van Gogh, so that was cool. But afterwards, I was just kind of wandering around. I was like, oh, I'll just sit at this bench here, and there's this giant window that looked out into the city, and I just drew the building that was I was facing in front of, and I even included me here just drawing in that building that I was drawing. So I found that pretty cool. And then we move on to this page right here. This one was just kind of experimenting. At the time, I was kind of into Photoshop collages. I didn't do too many Photoshop collages, but I really liked artists that did this style. But anyways, um, but yeah, so it was really just kind of collaging some different images together that I kind of came up with and both reference images. So I believe this angel here was a reference that I took from the internet and the rest was just up to my imagination. So I included a lot of my clouds. Um, and then a lot of just abstract things to kind of fill up the space. Uh, it was an interesting experiment. I really enjoyed doing it, but I don't think this was like a cool enough page to, you know, really show off or make prints of at the time. Can we move on to this page here? This was actually a page that I did while I was camping with my family, and I drew in this crazy city. And then a couple months later, I went on a trip to the Philippines, and we had a layover in Japan. And while I was in Japan, I just it was interesting because I I really wanted to see Tokyo my whole life, and I finally got that experience. We went um, out of the airport for like three hours from like midnight to 3 a.m and we took the train system to Shibuya, Tokyo. And I just found the city to be kind of dystopian and depressing, uh, probably because it was that time of the night and we were just watching all these workers just silently walking back to wherever they live and stuff. It was just, I don't know, it was kind of a weird vibe, so I decided to make this image a lot more dystopian. Um, so while I was in Shibuya, 
I uh, went to a coffee shop and I was just drawing while looking out the window and I just made this a lot more dystopian with, you know, these creatures here with their eyes closed and open and freaking out and we got like things that say eyes shut and obey, the void, obey, eyes shut, blah, 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 and all that cool stuff. We go to this page. I never completed this. Um, this one I think I did back when I was in New York. It was just a test page to fill up a page of just abstract doodles. Never got around to finishing it because this was around the time when I kind of transitioned from doing a lot of abstract pen and ink work to a lot more surreal type stuff. We move on to this page. We have another uh, unfinished page here of just, again, some abstract doodle work. But really what I was trying to do with this was, you know, get my line work precision down and my speed. Um, I was really into graffiti and tagging and all that kind of stuff. And I noticed that they're really fast with their, when they tagged, you know, they'd, let's say I'm writing my name, Cody Tarantino. And it was like, you could just see the energy coming off the lines and they were very precise and they were very quick. Um, and I like that movement that you could see within the lines. So that's kind of what I was testing here. You could see that the lines are very bouncy and very precise. And I was just practicing that. And that really just helped me build my confidence with pen and ink work. And we go over here. Um, we have this other page, which is actually just something I took out of one of my other sketchbook pages right here. We have this guy. It says, it won't hurt. And this thing's coming out of the computer screen and grabbing onto his face. <laughs> And I just wanted to expand on that idea and make just that as its own piece. And also do something where I didn't fill up the entire page. Just kind of tried out a concept instead. But yeah, pretty interesting. Then we go to this page right here, which is called Organized Chaos. Actually, no, this doesn't have a name. This was a test when I first got my fountain pen, my first ever fountain pen. Uh, it was a Lamy fountain pen, and I just wanted to test it out. I saw a lot of videos of people using it. It just looked so satisfying, and I just was just opened a new page and was like, all right, let's test it out. And it was really satisfying to draw with. So I just filled up this whole page in about an hour, just drawing lines, not really thinking too much about the piece, just... Just seeing how this differed from my normal Faber-Castell or Micron felt tip pens that I used at the time. You can see here it says, this is the official test of the Lamy fountain pen. And then just a lot of just crazy chaos and things like that. But yeah, kind of getting boring in here, you know? Just to be inside talking. And, you know, I'm looking out the window right now. It's, like, really sunny. It's such a nice day. I spend way too much time inside, to be honest. Honestly, let's let's change it up. All right, guys. So I got tired of just sitting and talking and drawing inside. I don't go outside enough, so I just thought that we would film the rest of the sketchbook tour outside. So let's get back into it. So this one was drawn outside downtown Kalamazoo. Uh, there's a lot of really old... Uh, architecture down there. So I went down by the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts and there's this old bed and breakfast building um, that I decided to draw but I never finished it. I spent about three hours outside just working on it and I promised myself that I would finish it one day. I even took a picture so I could finish the rest at home but I just never got to it. Then we go to this page right here which is just another experiment. Um, a lot of the words here are just things that were on my mind. They don't really mean anything. I put in some, I think, lyrics from songs that I was listening to at the time. And I just mixed in abstraction along with words here. I, I don't know what some of these words end up idolizing the god and it should be up to one. I don't fucking know. There's, there's a lot of stuff. I fall behind my skeleton. They tell me that I'm blind. I know that I'm intelligent. My confidence just died. Oh, oh by Kendrick Lamar. Oh yeah, that's from uh, Untitled Unmastered. Now I remember. On to the next page, we have this pencil sketch here, which I never finished. I think I started this in class and just like got uninterested and was like, whatever. You can see here too, there's like an actual arm that's sketched out then erased. Um, but I was like, eh, let's make this angel like a skeleton instead. Never finished it though. Then here, I'm basically doxing myself. This is uh, my parents' house. I stood outside in the backyard and just started drawing. I, I like to do a lot of... Um, real-time drawings during this time and it really does help a lot if you're trying to just learn how to draw is just sitting outside and drawing your surroundings this was kind of interesting because I drew this from a lower angle because of I don't know why I think my head is just like thinking weird or something but I was able to draw from a different angle than I was actually drawing at this is something that Michelangelo and da Vinci I believe were able to do but I can't do it to their level but it's just something interesting that I noticed 
All right, well, let's move to a different spot because this fucking rock thing that I'm sitting on is really uncomfy. So, yeah, let's get to it. Think I make it? Go for it. Holy shit, well that was crazy. Let's go on to the next page. Now this one is a drawing that I did in the Philippines. Another real-time drawing. This is a tricycle. If you don't know what a tricycle is in the Philippines, basically it's a motorcycle with a booth attached so people can, you know, catch rides. It's basically like the Philippines version of a taxi cab. Um, and there's just so many of these just on the streets. This one was actually parked right next to my grandparents' driveway. So I just sat out there for probably about an hour and sketched this in. It was a really hot day and I was sweating by the end of it, but uh, this is probably one of the sketches that I'm most proud of in this sketchbook that I did in person. Then now we have another sketch, um, another real-time sketch that I did in the Philippines. This one was taken, um, it's this place a little bit more north of where we lived. It was called Tagaytay. Um, this was a resort, and I just drew in this, but I just never got around to finishing it because we were only there for a couple hours. And then the same thing here, same place, but this uh, this time I drew the boat that we actually took off of uh, the main place that we were at, and uh, we rode it to this island that's called the Batangas. Um, it's a really interesting place. We like scuba dived and, well, we didn't scuba. We snorkeled, saw a lot of fish, and really interesting place. I got many stories from there, actually. I'll have to talk about it sometime. Then we go to this page. I think this is the last illustration that I did in the Philippines. I was going to do like a short comic book. Never finished it though. Um, this is basically the front porch at my parents or at my grandparents' house. And then here is kind of the street view of what it looked like. Um, some of these buildings are real. The other of other buildings in this image I just made up, kind of just representing just the overall look of the area. And here we have me just drawing with my pen. Um, and then here we have an interesting scene with some like kind of mansion pillars and then jail pillars. Um, because I, I don't know, I just found the area to be very interesting. A lot of the rich people closed their entire um, like property off with these pillars here. But to me, it almost looked like prison bars because they're like shielding themselves off from the outside world. But it made sense because a lot of the people there were very poor. And so they needed to make sure that none of their property got messed with. On to the next page. Ah, uh, this is just some random sketches and stuff. This is when I started to not take the sketchbook as seriously. I was like, all right, let me just come up with stuff and use the sketchbook for it. This one is actually really interesting. Um, it doesn't look that interesting, but this is basically the first version of Time Devil um, that I did back in, I believe, 2019. Um, I remember talking about this with Ron. I'm like, what do you think? This is a cool idea. And he's like, no, it's trash. You got to, like, develop it. It doesn't look that cool. And so I was like, all right, whatever, forgot about it. Then about eight months later, I ended up doing the first version of Time Devil, which, uh, yeah, you guys know that character. So yeah, on to the next page. We have another little sketch page I never finished. I believe I did this one in class. I just never was like a fan of it at all. Never finished it. Uh, you know, maybe if I had the sketchbook around for another year, I would have, but I just never got around. And then this is, I think, one of the final pages um, in the sketchbook before it just goes to blank pages. This one is titled The Fight. Um, one of my friends was like, you should do a drawing where it's two people shooting at each other and their bullets hit each other and make this explosion in the middle with crazy mandala designs. And so I did exactly that. Um, I just freehanded it during a couple of the classes that I had that day. And by the end of the school day, I just showed this and I was like, yo, what do you think? And he's like, bro, you did it better than I would have imagined. But this was just a nice exercise. I did this actually with my Lamy fountain pen. You would kind of tell because it's not black ink. It's like this navy blue ink. Um, but yeah. And then, oh, actually we do have a couple more pages in here. Um, forgot about this page. I actually did this one in Japan. Before I got to the Philippines, I started doodling this. Um, I was just doodling some of the signs that I saw in Tokyo and just kind of making up my own scene that I never finished. I, next time I go to Japan, I'll make something similar to this and I'll definitely finish it. Um, you can see here it says ramen and then I remember I asked someone in a coffee shop, I was like, what does this mean? They said it meant like karaoke or something. So I'm just going to take their word for it, <laughs> but I have no clue. And we go to this page, which is like the only full pencil drawing in the sketchbook. Um, this one, I, I don't know, it's just more of me testing out different faces and patterns that I haven't really used before. So you can see a lot of eyeballs, a lot of like checkerboard type stuff. Um, 
a lot of things in here. Uh, one of my favorite parts uh, happens to be this little arch thing down here. You could see like some of the layers are like peeling off where it kind of doesn't make sense but makes sense at the same time. But yeah. And then we have this drawing right here, which I never finished. I just kind of started and was like, eh, this is dumb. Would have been a kind of cool though. Maybe I'll have to reuse this idea. I feel like that could be used for something. I don't know what though. And then finally, the last page in the sketchbook. I have no idea what to call this. I started this in my uh, AP Euro class when I was a uh, junior in high school. Uh, we were le learning about Napoleon at the time, so that's why this guy's in there. Then the rest is just craziness explosions. I just wanted to illustrate a lot of explosions. So you could see with like the nuclear blast down here, you could see I drew the actual fountain pen that I was using, the Lamy, um, and all that cool stuff. But yeah, that uh, wraps it up for the sketchbook tour. So um, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go and run off into the distance to my death.